rabbit or right. as John Shannon says, a little excursion there. Yeah. But uh <clears throat> but, so, I, but I at least, at least hope that the the divinity part has been has been explained because James, I mean I just like you said, it all comes down to that word God. Mm -hmm. When they hear reference being made to God, they automatically want to uh, assimilate that with the Father, which in 1 John uh, chapter 4, which the caller brought up, that would be the Father because you have the two different terms being used. But when we're, when other times when the word re uh, God is being referenced, it needs to be, you know, depending on the context, it needs to be looking at that Godhead, that divine nature, right. deity and divinity. Right. So... Uh, that's that's one we thing. Probably have, we probably have a video on that or lesson. I know I've done some in past. If you email me or call me, tell me, you know, give me aim address, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'll try to dig one out and make mm -hmm. a copy of it. I mean, there's, uh, you know, sometimes that's that's the easiest thing to do. Right. And you can watch it again and again and again. So, uh, you know, you do that. So. And even different different materials on it. You know, if they need right. certain books or, or right. whatever that we can give them. Because, I, I mean, I will say about that, James, the Godhead... You know, looking at three persons in one, that's kind of like a, an abstract type of thought. So that can be a little tricky. Mm -hmm. But again, it's nothing to get uh, frazzled over, you know, nothing to, to lose your mind about. Just kind of take a deep breath and just kind of slow down with your thinking. Because oftentimes, I mean, I'll admit when I'm looking at different things and it's kind of new to me, my mind starts going in all types of directions. And oftentimes, the direction it goes is dependent upon other things that I've already heard. Right. But once I slow, once I stop and I say, okay, forget about what I've heard, let's just look at what it says. Right. Then it becomes clear. So yeah. oftentimes, you have to, you know, you kind of have to get rid of some of that baggage. Yeah. That look at the context, right. the verse before, after, so forth. Yeah. Right. So. So. Well, Michael, we started with 1 Corinthians 4. Sure did. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2. 2. Yeah. 14. About 30 minutes ago, and that's fine. <laughs> we, had some, we had some good calls and uh, good good discussion. So, uh, but we're we're back to discussing this illumination of the spirit. Right. How how do we know the spirit is uh, telling us or whatever? And so uh, this, but this is one of those verses we call them sugar sticks. Mm -hmm. well, this is one everybody likes to run to, and this is you know this is how we prove the Holy Spirit uh, tells us and does this for us. So uh, you want to read that, and let's, then we'll. Kick it around a little bit. I sure can. First Corinthians two fourteen. But the natural man receiveth not the things of, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay. So, what um, what is the argument that's kind of made from this verse? Well, basically, what they're using is this again, going back to total hereditary depravity. And, and even then, total hereditary depravity doesn't really work in the fact that some people are elect. Well, if you're elect, then there's got to be something about you that's different from everybody else, that your nature wouldn't be so depraved. But anyways, the statement is, is that those people that are so depraved and not of the elect class, that they are this natural man. And the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. In other words... James, I'm sure a Calvinist would view you and I as being a natural man because we're going to argue against him. And he's going to say, since you are the natural man, it is impossible for you to be able to receive, be able to understand the things concerning or about the Spirit of God. Right. We're just not going to be able to understand it. Unless we happen to be a part of that elect class, then God is going to spend, send His Spirit like, to illuminate mm. There, there we're going right. back to our term to illuminate us so that we can understand right. what's being said here. So if you, if you never understand the Bible, then obviously you weren't one of the elect. Mm -hmm. uh, or you may be one of the elect and the Holy Spirit illuminated you. And what? I, I See, that, I, I don't know. I don't understand that, Michael. It's just like it all depends upon God. Mm-hmm. And that's, all, that's only what it is. It yeah. takes all responsibility away from man. Yeah. But James, you, I mean, do you really, I know that preachers aren't supposed to use this word, but do you really want to know how stupid this argument is? Yeah. Okay, a Calvinist says that an, a, nat, a natural man, a non-elect person, cannot understand the Word of God. But yet, what are we reading here? Yeah, the Word of God. We're reading the Word of God. He's going to take you to the Bible to try to explain to you why you cannot understand. Right. 
Well, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. Well, no wonder. It's the Bible. You're not supposed to understand yeah. it. Yeah. But then, but, but look at what this does. James, do you understand this? I mean, does this make sense to you? That the natural man is not going to receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I mean, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Well, I can understand that too. Yeah. So evidently, you and I must be a part of the elect class. Or we're already illuminated. Right, that too. And didn't even know it. Yeah. See, but you see what, you see what Mike is saying, friends? It's like the people that are telling you you need to be illuminated by the Spirit will take you to a verse that to explain to you why you can't understand the verse. Well, you're not going to understand the verse if you're not illuminated. Now, but now if he gets you to understand it, you know, if you, uh, I mean, what if I conceded? Okay, you're right, sir. You're right, Mr. Calvinist. I, I can't understand the word. I am a natural man. And I just understood that from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm not a natural man anymore. Right. You see, yeah. you've just helped me. So... But, how, but again, that goes back to our point. How did he do it? Right. He took you to the Bible. Exactly right. And that's exactly what we've been saying all this time. Friends, you've got to get into the book. You know, stop waiting for this spirit, you know, for the spirit to illuminate right. you. That's not going to happen. Even the Calvinist knows. I mean, he's, you know, he's going to preach all day long. The spirit of God has to come upon you and work upon you. But yet when you're sitting down talking to him, he's going to take you to the Bible. Right. And that's why Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. John six sixty three, so it's it's the word, you know, it's the word that quickens, you know, mm -hmm. or the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh probably nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life, <clears throat> and so this is what, you know, this is what's going to illuminate you. Mm -hmm. Paul said, uh, "What is it we can understand?" Ephesians, uh, Ephesians guess, uh, three and verse four. Three four, yeah. I, I sometimes say four three, but three it's three four. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ. Now, you, you mean when you read after you're illuminated. When you're illuminated and you read. That's not, not what he said. Well, I mean, if you're going to you know, try to add some extra words in there, then yeah. sure. But no, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gathering that from this verse. And it, Well, if he said if you're illuminated, whereby, I mean, even if it's implied, whereby when you are illuminated, when you read, well, if I'm reading that, I still couldn't understand it. Right. I still couldn't understand the word illuminated. Right. So, unless I was illuminated. I understand illuminated. <laughs> So I mean, this this I mean, we talk about the evolutionist and circular reasoning. Right. This is That's circular exactly reasoning at its is. best. Exactly right. That's exactly right. So, uh, well, let's look. But in First Corinthians two fourteen, where we started this this natural man thing, you know what you said earlier about uh, understanding mm -hmm. and and learning. We always say, you know, Michael, let's well go back, read the verse before, read the verse after, right. or whatever. Because when you read verse thirteen. All right, the natural man can't receive the things of the Spirit. They're foolish, you can't discern them. But look at verse uh, 12. Okay. <clears throat> First Corinthians 2, 12. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now, how does the Holy Spirit illuminate? Paul tells you in verse 13. Right. He's teaching. Well, how does he teach? The words that, that the apostles had were the, was the Holy Spirit's way of teaching men. Now, if you want to talk about being enlightened by the Holy Spirit, well, how about just reading the Word without any extra illumination? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Michael, the only illumination I need when I read the Bible is I just need a good light. <laughs> you know, I, my, my eyes getting kind of bad. Right. That's, that's the only illumination I need. All right, we got a phone call. We'll All right, go it. ahead. Yeah. You're on work from the Lord. Have, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Madeline Wharf. I used to go by Marie Orr. Okay. And I'm in High Grove. I need somebody to come pick me up and take me and take care of me. Okay. Well, this is a this is a Bible program. Do you have a, a Bible question? I don't. I know God don't want me to stay here, but my family's dead. Okay. And well, I just want somebody out there that cares about me to come pick me up. Okay. Well, can I 
can I get maybe get your name and address and talk to you off the air? Um, I, I don't really know of anybody to to put you in contact with right now, but I mean, I'll I'll do what I can. Can I put you on hold? Oh. What do you need to know? Well, I I'd like to I'll I'd like to get your name and address off the air so that everybody doesn't know, but I'll put you in contact with someone if I can. Can I just put you on hold and come back right to you? Or will you call I, me back will you call me back after the show? I'll try to. Okay. If you call me back when we go off the air, call me back at ten o'clock, then then uh We'll see if we can't point you in the right direction. How about that? All right, thank you. Okay. I, I'm doing good. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm not in the shape that I was in. Right. Well. Somebody kind of let me stay with them and look after them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you like Peter said, gold and silver have I none, but such as I have, I'll, I'll give you. So, if you'll call me back in about 45 minutes, we'll see what we can do. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Not real sure what what that was out, but you know what we're we're trying to serve. You know where Jesus came to minister and uh, seek and save the lost, and so if we can help this lady, I'm not real sure. Did you want uh, her to have your your cell number? Um, or yeah, it doesn't matter. She can call this number. Okay, all right. Uh, we'll, we'll talk. Okay, but, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> but yes, ma'am, if you if you are uh, you're still watching two seven six three four zero two six five three is my cell number. You can call me at that number, 276, which we're uh, below the third here, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me, 276-340-2653. All right, so illuminated by the Spirit. Uh, the Spirit teaches and illuminates by using words. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, Michael, I think that's very simple if you just come back to the, to the, one, the verse right before that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, instead of saying, well, the natural man and just taking that out of context, well, how about just looking at the verse right before it? Paul says, we're teaching the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit's teaching through our words. That's the things we teach and the things we speak. So uh, that's how you can be enlightened, uh, which that is a biblical term, to be enlightened, uh, uh, but it's not by some mystical or... Uh, some unknown, yeah, some yeah. unknown work fuzzy, yeah. I mean, it's obvious what's taking place here in this context. I mean, the very fact that you have Paul even preaching. I mean, if it is the case that, that it is impossible for the natural man to receive the things of God, the Spirit, or the Spirit of God, why, why even say it? I mean, why, right. why even worry about it? Why not just go ahead and, you know, kind of drift over that part if it's the case that, well, in, in saying it, there's really no hope of them. It's kind of like what we said about the Phelps. Right. Here they are bashing the homosexual. Tell but, them they repent. Yeah, tell them that they you know that they're lost and that they're going to hell, but that's just that's just the way God chose them to be. And tell them to repent, too. Right. It's one thing to say you're lost and going to hell, and then but then saying you need to repent. But you can't repent until God lets you. Right. So I'm going to hell. I can't do anything about it unless God lets me, so I might as well just keep doing it. You know, if God wants me to repent, then he'll snatch me mm -hmm. out of there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but yeah, this, so this, you know, this Holy Spirit illuminated. And what about this, Michael, too? The fact that Paul is writing. He's not even telling them face to face. He's right. writing to them. Right. Now, <laughs> we, look, we're reading what Paul wrote, and we're told that we can't understand the Bible unless the Holy Spirit illuminates us. Now, Paul writes the letter the first time and sends it off to a group of Christians that, he said in 1 Corinthians 3, what does he call him in 1 Corinthians 3? In 1 Corinthians 3, in verse 1, he says, And I, brethren, so they're Christians, yeah. they're saved people, brethren, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Back up, and now let's look at one more in chapter 1. How, how does he address them? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 2, it says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Now, you remember you can't say... That's exactly what I was thinking about. All these, all these they're carnal, they're, they're saints, they call on the name of the Lord, and yet, you know, they're carnal, and 
They can't discern stuff. And they've got, and, and it's being well reported, it's being commonly reported by the household of Chloe that there's division among them. Right. And they're mistreating their brethren. Right. And they've got a man in adultery. Right. There in the church. Right. But, Abusing the Lord's Supper. Right. You know. The list just goes on and on and I, on with the Corinthian just, church. I mean, everybody knows, if you read through the, the letters to the Corinthians, I mean, they're one of the most troubled uh, churches that you read about in the New mm -hmm. Testament. And yet, and yet, Paul is writing to them and says they're carnal, and yet and he expects them to understand this. So, I mean, I, I think I see where you're going. If there ever was a church that needed this illumination, illumination. it was the church at Corinth. Right. But yet, what is Paul trusting in? Yeah. Paul is trusting that if I write to you, you're going to be able to read it with my knowledge of being inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, right. now James, that really is key. Paul was inspired. The things that he was writing were being given to him by the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, if, if it is the case that he is inspired in writing things by the Holy Spirit, then they ought to have needed to be illuminated to understand what he was writing. Right. But yet none of that is, none of that is in, included yeah. in the context. Right. It's just, here it is, you read it, and you can understand it. And so, and so if, if Paul is writing to this group of people and they don't need to be illuminated, why, why do I need to be illuminated? To read the same words. Right. You know, I mean, is it some cryptic words, you know, do I need to, you know, some cryptic key to uh, decipher it or whatever, you know, the, or the Enigma machine that the, that the Germans had, you know, World War II or something to try to figure out the code. No, it's just you read and you understand. That's right. James, I mean, I would say if these carnal brethren could read it and understand it, I mean, I've, I'm not going to put myself in the same boat. I mean, I'll, right. I would say, you know, I definitely have, have my problems, but even with my problems, I can still read this and understand right, it. Right, Just so, as they could. <clears throat> so that illumination, you know, the need for the Holy Spirit to, to illuminate them is, you know, just kind of goes out the window with this. Not to mention, like you said earlier, it just, it really indicts the Holy Spirit. The right. Holy Spirit is guiding Paul to write this, and then he goes, okay, now, but now I'm going to go over here to, zip over here to Corinth too and illuminate some people so mm -hmm. that they can understand what mm -hmm. I just wrote. Mm-hmm. Well, how about if you just illuminate the, the one who wrote it, you know? If you illuminate it the first time, yeah. there's no need to illuminate it the That's second right. time. Silliness. Silliness, folks. This is ignorance going to seed. And what you mean, you know, James, all this is is just a ploy for the preachers to keep the people ignorant, which the preachers, man, the preachers are ignorant. I mean, we, again, and door knocking and going out and doing the things that we do, we talk to your preachers. Yeah. We know that your preachers don't know the Bible either. Right. So what are, what are they afraid of? Well, they're afraid, since I don't know the Bible, I don't need my membership knowing the Bible, so we're all just going to stay ignorant, and that makes the preacher's job easy. He doesn't have to study quite as hard. Right. All he has to do is get up and say, well, you know, the Lord spoke to me on the way up here, so here's my sermon. Yeah. And so that's, you know, that's keeping everybody on the same level. So, I mean, really, really, James, when you stop and think about it, the members are on the same level with the preacher. It's just that the members don't know it. Right. Because he's being led by the Spirit, mm. supposedly, and so they're being kept yeah. in the dark. But, friends, if you really stop and think about it, he is not at all any smarter than you are in the Bible. And especially if you would sit down and study, and if you're studying with us on what does the Bible say in the Word from the Lord, man alive, you're going yeah. to be leaps and bounds <laughs> right. beyond your preacher. Exactly right. And that, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. He, you know, they've got the people convinced that they know more than the people, but really they're on the same playing field, and so it really kind of reminds me of the story about the, you know about the elephant. When the elephant's young, they tie him to a tree, mm -hmm. you know, where he can't get away or chain him up, whatever. And then when he's older, they just tie a little string around his leg, and he thinks I can't get away. Mm. Well, yeah, he is strong enough to, you know, just snap it and run. Right. right. So uh, these people, you know, being uh, uh, duped in believing that. Uh, yeah, that they're listening to some someone who who knows somewhat, mm -hmm. but really they don't. So, uh, but we're talking about teaching, uh, now we kind of explored this earlier. You know, why even teach? You know, if you if you're illuminated, or if you need to be illuminated, mm -hmm. uh, what's the purpose of even going through the process of teaching people? Well, I mean, again, as we're looking at here in First Corinthians chapter two and verse fourteen, supposedly they're not even going to be able to get it anyways. Right. So. Any, uh, any teaching that's being done, if it's not by illumination that's following, then it's just going to go in one ear, out the other. Right. 
So again, all of it is just, I mean, we're, it's vain. I mean, right. It's just, they're getting up there to present information, to be seen of men. That no one's going to... You know, they, they, oh, they get the, oh, preacher, that was a good sermon this morning. I didn't understand any of it because I'm not illuminated, but, man, it was good. Yeah. So yeah. I just, it, there really would be no point. That's right. You on the word from the Lord? Hi, James. Hi, Michael. Hey, hey. Uh, one thing I, I catch and, and gain a whole lot from uh, the Church of Christ, you don't only learn from the King James the, the truth that y'all teach, but y'all also teach the truth that comes out of the false doctrine books that they have. I, I never knew anything about the Mormon Bible. About I think I heard you say that they think that the uh, the black generation is not going to heaven. And I, I think yeah, that was the they, first time they, I ever heard that. They teach they teach the black people are cursed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know if if the the true public was out there listening to all this stuff, they'd know that. That's something they don't want to get into. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they, they need to get into the Church of Christ and learn about the true Christian. That's right. Exactly right. Okay. Well, God bless y'all. All right. Uh, we really appreciate your work and everything. All right. Thanks for your call. You know, there was something, you're, you're discussing this uh, teaching aspect, James. There was something that came to mind in the, in the book of Hebrews. And it's, you know, there again, it's explaining, you know, basically like you were saying about, about the Apostle Paul. And the fact that you have in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 15, there's a reference being made there about something that the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost actually said. Verse mm -hmm. 14, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, verse 16, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them and their sins and their iniquities will I remember, will I remember no more. So the Hebrews writer says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 15 that it was the Spirit that said these things when in fact when you go back and you find that, find that actual quotation in verse 16, that's something that Jeremiah said back in the Old Testament. So here in the New Testament, it's being said that the Holy Ghost said it. Well, how did he say it? Mm, well, the Holy right. Ghost did not say it audibly for all people to hear that were standing there. Right. But the message was given to a prophet, and then the prophet gave the message to the people. Right. That's good. Now, if that's how it worked in the Bible, friends, and that is how it worked in the Bible, and that's mm -hmm. how it worked in the Old Testament, how do you think it's going to work in the New Testament right. today? Right. The very, you know, the exact same way. The Holy Ghost gave the message to men. Those men then gave it to other men, but then also those men wrote it down and had it recorded for us today. So what does that do about the, the preacher then? Well, we can just go back and read the things that he said. Right. We're not needing continuous message being given to us. The Holy Spirit, and this is what we've always said, friends, the Holy Spirit operates through a medium. He operates, he uses a tool. He, op he uses the Word, and it may be the Word that's spoken. It may be the Word that's written, but it's always through the Word. It's not this direct operation that's guiding, nudging, you know, giving people the you know, Holy Ghost bumps or whatever they want to call it. <laughs> you know, that's not what it is. Uh, which that, that verse reminds me, Micah, if we could, let's look at Acts chapter 20 and verse 23. The one that Micah just read said the Holy Spirit witnessed, right? And then it Quoted, quoted Jeremiah. So the Holy Spirit was witnessing by a prophet. Well, let's look at this. In Acts 20, in verse 23, now Paul is, is, is uh, uh, talking to the, the elders at Ephesus, and he says, Now behold, I go bound in the Spirit to Jerusalem, knowing the things that shall befall me, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Well, how was the Holy Spirit telling the Apostle Paul that, you know what, if you go up to Jerusalem, you're going to be in bondage, you're going to be afflicted if you go. How was he telling them? Well, let's look. Let's look at Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. Acts chapter 11 and verse 28. All right. You might have to read that one. All right. It says, There stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. All right. So 
There's the Holy Spirit witnessing. He's witnessing by Agabus, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at Acts 21. Acts 21 and beginning in verse 10. And Acts, as, as, we, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Okay. And uh, when they heard these things, they, they uh, both we, they, that place besought him not to go to Jerusalem. So the point is, Paul said the Holy Spirit was, was witnessing all of these things. And yet how was the Holy Spirit witnessing? By prophets. Here's Agabus, a, a reliable prophet. He uh, prophesied that a, that a dearth was coming to land, and sure enough, it happened. And then, <clears throat> when Paul needed to have a, a a warning about what was going to happen to him, in Acts 21, oh well, here comes Agabus down, and he says what? He says, well, you know what? You, there's uh, you, you're going to be you're going to be bound. And so the Holy Spirit is talking through Agabus, friends. The same. That's what we're saying today. The Holy Spirit is still talking today. Mm -hmm. he is, he's already given the message. He's already illuminating. He's still teaching. But it's through this book. It's through this book. It's not through some, you know, mystical, warm, fuzzy feeling. It's, 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 it's through, the, through the tool of God's Word. And, you know, James, I mean, that, that really would be the key. I would like to hear some preacher today that's, being claimed, that's claiming to be led by the Holy Spirit Give some type of information that's not found in this book. Give some type of teaching that cannot be traced back to something that's already been recorded. And then how would you know that that was inspired? Well, I'm, I'm actually glad that you asked because okay. we actually have been given a way so that we can know that, in fact, these things are inspired sayings or inspired writings. And they went forth and preached everywhere. So there's the, there's the information. Right. There's the words. They're preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Okay. If somebody were to come along and give some new information, they ought to be able to give some type of demonstration. That's right. Something so as to confirm what's being said. And the signs following, friends, the signs following were, were, were done or were manifest by the power of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you know, the, the gifts of the Spirit, those are things that were used to confirm the Word. That's how the Holy Spirit was operating to verify this book. Mm -hmm. Now, friends, if the Holy Spirit has already verified this book, do you have to go get it verified again? <laughs> I mean, do, do you really need it verified again? Do you really need the Holy Spirit to say, now, you know, James, this is, this is what I wrote. You know, this is what I wrote over 2,000 years ago, and, you know, now you need to, uh, you need to listen to it again. Oh, really? You know, I'm glad you told me that, um, Holy Spirit, because I would have never believed that this was inspired word unless you told me. Really, friends? <clears throat> I mean, once you get a, a court document and you get it notarized and authenticated, whatever, it's, it's uh, notarized and authenticated. You, you know, know every, anywhere you take it, it's, it's authenticated. It is the, uh, 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 the genuine article. You don't have to get it re-authenticated and re-authenticated and re-authenticated. Same way with the Word of God. If this, is the, if this is the inspired Word that is confirmed by the Holy Spirit, then uh, back then this is the same thing to today. But, Michael, what you said about uh, someone finding something, you know, giving me something else, uh, that's what we always say when someone says, well, the, the Holy Spirit told me, well, if it's something that's not in this book, you're going to have to demonstrate it. You're going to have to verify it. You're going to have to prove it. Because I know this has been authenticated by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I know this has been confirmed by the Holy Spirit, but I can't, I can't prove what you just told me it's by the Holy Spirit. Well, James, let's let's go back to our clip here and let's let's listen to what he says okay. because I, I think a, another point needs to be needs to be made here with what or he says. Or may we pray, Father? I ask right now that the Holy Spirit will illuminate the Scriptures for the entire body today. Or may we pray, Father? I ask right now that the Holy Spirit will illuminate the Scriptures for the entire body today. 
he has actually just insulted the intelligence of every single person sitting in that building. Okay. And him praying that prayer. Now he might be. I mean, he you know he takes this new he takes this different tone when he prays, a more reverential tone, and his voice kind of gets a little bit more you know a little bit more soft there. But really, I mean, that if I were sitting there, and I'm thinking you know I'm and I'm really listening to what he's saying, he's ultimately saying, God, these people are too dumb to read your Bible and to understand what's right. going on here. Right. So make it simpler for them. Now, friends, what does that say about God? Mm -hmm. He's, you know, he's insulting my intelligence, but then he's also just insulted the Word of God in that, well, God, you wrote it, but you wrote it on such a level that we can't understand it. Right. So now we need you to dumb it down for these dumb people so that we can all get on the same page. Now, Michael, what you said earlier about, <clears throat> about when, when you don't understand how the Holy Spirit works or operates and how the Word operates and how everybody starts doing whatever, well, that sounds a whole lot like the Catholics. You know, the Catholics, the Pope says, Very good. You know what? Yeah. Let's, let, you know, you, you little peons, y'all don't, don't know the Bible. You know, you just let the, you let the cardinals and the bishops and the Pope and everything, we'll, we'll read the Bible to you. You know, you don't need to read the Bible. Well, really, that's kind of, that's kind of uh, condescending, I guess you might say. Very much so. To, and uh, uh, and, to, uh, every, to everyone. And since you brought up, you know, since you brought up the Pope, um, what does that make? Mr. Luffman there. If he's the one up front and he's the one that's ultimately receiving this illumination above everybody else. Let's call well, him daddy. That, call him let's Pope. call him Papa. Papa. Yeah. Papa Luffman. Papa Luffman. I mean that's that's and that and James that has a nice little ring to it. Papa it, really, it really does. And but but when you get down to it, I mean pastors are not willing to bury you if you don't keep up with your tithes. Yeah. Does that not sound like a like a mm -hmm. pope, like a potentate, like a king? Yeah. But that that's an unjust king to me. I don't want to be under that type of system. Now talk about a death tax. Uh, no. Certainly. Yeah. I mean, so James, you know, at this point we're at we're at thirty minutes here. All right. Do we want to do we want to start pitting preacher against preacher here? Oh yeah. yeah. I, I think we ought I think we ought to do that. Yeah. Because friends, this is ultimately where this teaching, this misteaching, this misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit. Is going to take you, and it's the reason why we have all these churches that are right. around us. Now let's right. we'll play we'll play Luffman again, and let's let's let him say what he says. Lord, may we pray, Father. I ask right now that the Holy Spirit will illuminate the Scriptures for the entire body today. So, if I, I think I'm safe in in assessing this, that he's expecting this illumination, so he's expecting some type of speaking to him. He's, I mean, he's expecting uh, yeah. something, something That's what I'm extra. Saying. Well, we hadn't really had anybody define what illumination is. Right. You know, so I don't know how it works. You know, it's kind of like people say, well, what does the Bible say about the Baptist church? I don't know because it's not in there. Right. You know, so I don't really know what, how he expects them to be illuminated, but it, unless it's, you know, some kind of telling them what the truth is. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like the, the Mormons, you get a warm, fuzzy feeling and you know it's the truth. Right. I, I, don't, I don't know. But then again... If you're reading it, how are you going to know that you've been illuminated? Right. I, I don't know. Right. So, well, you I don't know, know what he's expecting. Well, he might be expecting God to talk to him. Could very well. You know, he, he's Baptist, so he's he's new to this to this movement. So let why not listen to a preacher who's been well trained in the Pentecostal movement? Okay. Why not let's let's uh, listen to Jackie Poe and let's see what he has to say about the Holy Spirit and its audible uh, audible tones, if you will. Not from God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. Not from God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. Not from God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. Now, James, that's a Pentecostal preacher. Now, let me let me close this and try to reopen it and see so if we see it sees, yeah. so that we can see him and we can put a face uh, with the voice there. I've heard that voice. Not from God. There I have go. never heard the audible voice of God. Not from God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. Not from God. I have never heard the audible voice of God. I don't know anybody that has. There may be somebody. I don't know anybody that has. There may be somebody. I don't know anybody that has. There may be somebody. So he doesn't. Know, he's never heard the audible voice of God. Doesn't know anybody who has. But yet Mr. Okay. Luffman is praying for some, some type of, of illumination. Yeah. Well, according to Jackie Poe, it's not going to be an audible voice. 
So yeah. what? In, so what in the world is it going to be? Is it going to be like like plugging in a hard drive? I don't know. Is, maybe so. You know, the Holy Spirit is going to come and plug into Luffman's brain or all of our brains, and we're just going to be able to understand a little a little something that Sunday, or what's you know what's taking I, place here? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. It may be like the Mormons, and you just you know they you pray you pray that that if it's true, and then you'll know it's true just mm -hmm. when you pray. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know. Or it could be like the lady said under the tent when she was discussing with me. It's you know it's just it's the spirit moving. Well, what even that? That's vague. What yeah. does that mean? Um, yeah. What what kind of movement moving are we talking here? Are we gonna create a whole new world? Because I know in, the, in Genesis one the spirit moved on the face of the deep, right. and then the next thing you know, you got the sea, land, and night and day, and every, I mean everything all the creatures else. that that's, are there in. Right. So, so we will create a whole new world here. There's no, I mean, there's absolutely no telling. But you know, but again, James, I mean, I'm sure that. Uh, that if we wanted to, I could look through Dad's hard drive and the different shows that Jackie Poe has done where Jackie Poe is saying that he's he has the Holy Spirit. I mean, I, I think uh, I, don't oh, have yeah. that, I don't have that hard drive plugged in, but I know that he has said that if he wanted to, he could pick up snakes. Yeah. He's not going to do it but, but he could. it, but he could. Now, friends, here's an individual that says that he has the Holy Spirit, but yet he says he has never heard him audibly and doesn't know anybody that has. Now, what does that say, James? I mean, James, what does that say about the people that we have talked to that say, well, I, you know, I heard a, a small, still voice. Uh, here, here's, a, here's a better one. Let me see if I can get this one. Well, right, if you want to go ahead and answer that, I'll look for a better I think, one. I think they're, well, they must be ahead of Jackie Poe. I mean, I, why would I listen to Jackie Poe? He's never heard God's voice, and yet all these other people have heard God's voice, supposedly. Uh, I don't know why they would listen to Jackie Poe. Right. You know, if I was one of these people that think that thought I heard God's voice, and then you know you come along or Jackie Poe comes along, and say I've never heard God's voice. Well, <laughs> you know, you need to be listening to me. Yeah, exactly. I'm, yeah, let's let's stop listening to Jackie and let's listen to somebody else here. Right. I think we actually have a have a call there. Okay. I was trying to find a you're on, video. You're on the word from the Lord. Two fucking jackasses. All right. All right. There's that holy. That's. That's not a Holy Spirit, but that's some kind of spirit. And that's definitely demonic. Yeah. If they're, well, which, I, which of course demonic spirits aren't roaming the earth, right. but he's well, uh, child not, of the devil, let's right, put it that way. Child of the devil for sure. And if I remember right, he's uh, he, he's admitted that he's a member of the Baptist Church. So, uh, folks, if y'all recognize that that man's voice, uh, you know, you, if you know who he is, I, if he's a member of the church where you are, I would. I think I'd try to put a put, I'd put a muzzle, that, on, that, put a know, muzzle on him. Well, uh, what? Well, there's another right, if you want to. All right. All right. Well, James, you know, we're, we're, we're sitting here talking about Jackie Poe and the fact that he's never audibly heard the Holy Spirit's voice and he doesn't know anybody that has heard the voice. Now, I wonder what he would say about uh, this lady here, Miss Linda Greer. Let's take a listen to her and her experience. Okay. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. I want to share something with you that happened to me a couple of mornings ago. Just before I got up out of the bed, I didn't know whether Jesus wanted me to share this with you or not. But Jesus stood in his long white robe and I stood in mine and my robe was like his, long and white. We were about one foot apart from each other, but we were facing each other. And as we approached each other, both of us knew what was getting ready to take place. Whenever a man is approaching you to dance, that's what it was. My arm went what? up around his shoulder and his arm went around my waist and we began to waltz together. Oh, how beautiful that experience was. Oh, I love him so much. He'll take you dancing. He'll take you dancing, James. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. That. Uh, so I, here we I have. I shouldn't be laughing because that is so that's so blasphemous. But I just it's like. 
But but if hey, but if 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 the Lord's talking to her and she's seeing seeing all that, well. I mean, but, but that's the thing. Jackie Poe says he hasn't even heard the voice. But yet here's a woman. She danced she's with, with Jesus. dancing with Jesus. Now, friends, that's, you know, that's not even us saying these things. That's a Pentecostal preacher actually against her. That is Jackie Poe mm. against her. Mm. Now, what are we going to do? Is that on Jackie Poe Network? Uh, yeah, that would have that been on BTW. Yeah. It sure would have been. Yep. Well, 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 maybe the caller knows what we're talking about. I got some thoughts on it. You on word from the Lord? Yeah, these people that are hearing the voices and seeing uh, the spirits and stuff, they might want to go see a doctor and have a neurologist <laughs> have a C CT scan done and see if they got a tumor or anything growing. I think I think you're right. Might have some uh, <laughs> skits, have some schizos yeah. wandering around here in, in these churches. That's right. All right. Thanks for your call. You on word from the Lord? Yeah, so what exactly is y'all's opinion on how the Spirit speaks to you? I'm just tuning in, so I'm okay. sorry if I missed something. Okay. Well, I don't re we don't really give our opinion. We'll try to give you some scripture. How about that? That's right. On. Uh, That's what I meant. I'm okay. Sorry. All right. All right. Just making sure. All right. Well, we, we covered some of this a little bit before, but uh, since you just tuned in, that's fine. The Spirit speaks through the Word. All right? So... Right. It, I mean, do you believe the Bible is the the, the Spirit-inspired Word of God? Yes, so, sir, absolutely. All right. Uh, Peter said, uh, holy men of old spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm, Mike is trying to keep up with, with the scriptures there. Just go to... Oh, sorry. Uh, is it First Peter or Second Peter? I'll, Second Peter yeah. one twenty one, I think. Yeah. I'm kind of... I don't have the Holy Spirit guiding me, so I'm kind of, I kind of miss these verses up sometimes. Uh, there it is. Yeah. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Timothy 3, uh, 16. 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into every good work. So, we say all that to say, this word is the spirit-inspired word of God. All right? We're on the same page, sure. right? Yes, sir, on the all same right. page. Same page, okay. So, if the, whole, if the Holy Spirit inspired these words, then what we're saying is there's no need for the Holy Spirit then to talk directly to you or me since he's already given us his word. Yes, sir. Okay. So when, so when people come up to us and say, well, the Spirit told me this or God told me this or whatever, well, God already told me this. I know this is God's Word. I'm not sure why I should believe someone telling me God spoke to them because I don't know that that's God's Word. Uh, yes, sir. Do, do, does that make sense? Yes, sir, it makes sense. And I was just having a discussion with somebody the other day about how um, they kept saying, talk about speaking in tongues and such things. And I said, and I said, well, you know, if the Bible says that this is the final revelation from the Lord, how can he be revealing something to you that's not in the Bible? That's exactly right. Very good. That's very good. That's right. Yeah. Because anyway, well, I appreciate it, guys. I just wanted to hear your hear what y'all's official, you know, <laughs> what y'all was all of the scripture. How about what the Bible you know, says. Our very own yeah, point. yeah. All right. Thank you for your call. All right. Hey, where are you yes, located? Are you, are you live in Eden, Reedsville? Reedsville. Reedsville. Well, come out to the tent tomorrow night at the Eden Fairgrounds. At? at the Eden Fairgrounds. And it goes through the 25th, 7 o'clock each okay. night. 7 o'clock each night. Just, just gospel preaching. We never take up any money. You know, no snakes, nothing like that. Just, just. You know, we, we, we sing some we sing some songs, we ha uh, have a couple of prayers, we and just we just preach the word. All right. Well so, I appreciate it, y'all. We'll probably see y'all out there. Okay. Eden Fairgrounds. Thanks for your call. Right on. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Go again? Sure, why not? You on the word from the Lord? Hey, uh I heard 
I didn't hear what that man said a little bit ago, but I heard what you said about he must have been a Baptist. Yeah. And I want you to know that in the Bible it said, the Lord says that he doesn't call people uh, stupid or ignorant or anything like that, but he does call them foolish. So me as a Baptist for saved Baptist for the last 47 years, I will pray for you guys and your foolishness. Okay. Well, can I, well, can I tell I you? Have, can I tell I you? To say. Can I tell you why he said when I said that about him? Because he told us he was. I didn't just call him a Baptist randomly. Are you still there, caller? No, he's gone. So, I, I, Mike, I didn't just randomly call him a Baptist. Mm -hmm. Mark and I have talked to this this guy off the air. Right. And he's told us, you know, he he goes to a Baptist church, and so, you know, I don't know, you know. You know, if you take offense of that, but, you know, this guy said something interesting. He's been a saved Baptist. Right. Well, I don't know what he's saved from, but he's not saved from sin. Right. Not in the Baptist church. So, uh, but anyway, that but that's why I said he's he's a, he, he's a Baptist. You're on the word of the Lord. Yeah, you know what? You're lying out your teeth. Oh, okay. There he was again. We're not going to let him say no. much more. You're on the word of the Lord. Hello? Caller? Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, I don't know. Well, we got an, All right. Well, one. it might be him yeah, again. Yeah. Keep your You're on the word of the Lord. Uh, yes, is this the TV show? Yes, it is. Um, yes, I wanted to um, know if you believed in um, feeling the presence of God. Well, what do you mean? Well, something that, that has happened to me without any question in my mind, um, I, I walked into a room one day that where my husband had died. He, he had a heart attack, and I found him on the bed dead. And, um, of course, you'd be hysterical. I was hysterical, and I couldn't control, you know, my feelings. And I had this incredible feeling of, calm that came over me no words no visions but just a calmness and um, i've never had it since but it in several situations that night when i felt myself becoming so uh, distraught it it was just a calmness and um it was and i'm a christian i have been for many years and i i do believe that uh, God says he doesn't put a, a more on us than we can handle, that I did experience um, his presence, okay. not visually okay. and not supernaturally, well, but a presence. Okay. Well, ma'am, here, here's here's one thing that always, uh, you know, causes us kind of, I won't say, uh, I guess a red flag or whatever, is when people start talking about feelings, you know, the Bible only uses the word feel, Feelings are felt, I believe, nine times. Mm -hmm. And they never talk about salvation. They're always, it's usually emotion like, you know, the sorrow of someone dying or something like that. But it, And it's never in reference to, like, like knowing God's presence. As a matter of fact, uh, Mike is going to show us a verse here about uh, Samson. Now, was God with Samson? Would you, would you say God was with Samson? You know, giving him his strength. I think God is with all of us. I'm talking about, well, I'm talking about in the Bible, in Samson. God was huh? with Samson, giving him his strength. All, all right? right? But now notice what, notice what it said here. This is when Samson gets his hair cut. Delilah tricks him, cuts his hair off. In uh, Judges 16, 20, And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Now, ma'am, here's a man that had, I mean, when you actually, when you go back and you read the beginning stages of Samson's judgeship or his term as a judge, it references the fact that the Spirit moved him at different times. That's back in Judges chapter 14, I believe it is. In Judges 14, it talks about the Spirit moving him. But then here we are in Judges chapter 16 in verse 20, but he didn't even know that the Spirit had left him. Now that tells me right there, ma'am, that this is something different than some type of feeling mm. about the Holy Spirit. Well, you 
you know, I don't know what it is. All I know is um, that I never felt alone. Well, and I feel, I, the word feel, I think people um, believe in Christ and love Christ, and he is the center point of their life because they interact with, with Christ in a supernatural way. You know, uh, but, he, he can't, it's, okay, that but, might but, not but, be the right word, but it's, um, you would, I would, I just uh, believe he is um, my Savior so okay. much that um, but, when I read Scripture, okay, well, I think it's my, hold on, something hold on. I should read, and okay, I might be pointed to it, or, it's, and I don't mean it in a strange okay. way, just, in a, I'm a normal person, I just believe in Christ, and I have felt uh, the sensation or the the okay, feeling that um, that God is walking beside me, okay, but not that I see Him, not that I hear Him, but that makes uh, me believe in Him. Okay, but here's the thing, though, ma'am. Just because you have feelings, a feeling or or, or some kind of emotion, that is not proof of of truth. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans ten seventeen. So. If you think God is walking with you or you feel him touching you or like this lady that we just played a little bit ago, she was dancing with Jesus. Well, not touching those, me. I'm just saying, though. Just but, oh, okay. I'm just saying, all those things you're describing, we can't find in the faith. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if I'm going to believe it, I've got to hear God say it. I've got to see where that, something like that happened in the Bible. <clears throat> otherwise, other, otherwise, uh, ma'am, ma otherwise, ma'am, otherwise, otherwise, your story, your experiences are just are just as good as anybody else's. Mm -hmm. See that? And so I, I'm I'm not trying to be mean, but the, thing, the fact of the matter is, your feelings, your stories, while they may be real to you, that that's not what they are. You know, that's not God walking beside you or comforting you in, in that way, that's just some, that's your body's reaction to some emotions. I mean, you walked into a room where your husband passed away. I mean, that's that's a highly emotional place. I, I get the same type feelings when I go to see my grandmother's house, you know, wh where I spent a lot of time growing up. I mean, you know, places like I that have a certain emotional... strength, and I, if I think well, that... that uh, but you're I using, the... but ma'am, you're using a lot of I thinks and I feels, and we're not getting any Bible. Well, I believe what the Bible says. Well, can you give me what the Bible says? It might not be written, and I think God uh, looks uh, upon us every day. He well, directs our but step. But, ma'am, here's the you thing, know, I just wanted to say that I don't, okay. I don't believe in hearing the voice or okay. the seeing of the body. It's just but, uh, the uh, feel. I, I just say feeling. The okay, but, ma'am, the, the fact of the matter is your, your stories... What you're telling us is no different than the lady who said she saw Jesus. You said you felt, and we're bo we're saying on both those accounts, you're not giving us any Bible. You may believe the Bible, but you're not giving us any Bible. So why should we believe it since you're not giving us any Bible? See, we know this is from God, and therefore, if we want, if we're going to believe you, if we're going to believe you, ma'am, we're going to have to hear from the Bible. Being beside us, He will care for us. Ma'am. He, I know the Bible says he, God will never leave us nor forsake us. More than we could handle if okay. He's not watching. But ma'am, and protects okay. us. Okay. Protects us. Okay. We're listen. Okay. We're okay. Well, thank you for your call. I appreciate it. All right. We're we're running against the clock. Thank you for your call. You know, Mike. I, sometimes it's just oh, you well, just got to just stop and say. I don't know. You know, we're not getting anywhere here. Well, James, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the show. Right. That. Everything that we've been discussing, this whole idea of the Spirit illuminating, that's where it ends up leading you. Right. People end up going into these you know, long, drawn-out stories about their feelings. Friends, your feelings are not going to save me. It's going to yeah. be the, the things that I read about in here that's going to end up saving me if I obey them. Right. So you know, your stories and your testimonies, they don't do anything for me Right. if it's not backed up by what something that the Bible's already said. Got one minute, less than one minute. Well, that's what you want to. What do you want to say in wrapping? Yeah. Well, let's just. Let's, can we put our uh, tent info up or something about the tent? We want to remind everybody to come out to the tent. Uh, it's on the at the Eden Fairgrounds. It's uh, if you want the GPS, I think it's one nine seven three zero, 
or 19370. Just go north on 87 through Eden and you'll get to the fairground. You you won't miss the tent. Right. I promise you, you won't miss it. They're out there on the west side of the road, uh, 7 o'clock each night, no collections. We just want you to come out and study the Bible with us. And if you have a question, we'll be glad to answer them. So, Mike, I enjoyed it. It was fun. And uh, we'll probably do it, somebody will do it Sunday night. And yep. we'll be back here Thursday night uh, next week as well. Someone will. So until next time, remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you will get a word from the Lord. Have a good night.